Hi guys, Ghost here, and today we're playing Fear and Hunger Termina? I'm excited for this game. If y'all know anything about Fear and Hunger, y'all know what we're getting ourselves into. But other than that, let's go and try to survive. Okie dokie, guys. Get into it. <laughs> Whoa, I got very white. Um, choose a character class X soldier, occultist, doctor, mechanic, yellow mage, botanist, he's hot, journalist. Slide that off screen. <laughs> um, info having fought in the war since he was 13, X soldier excels at range combat and has great aim with most firearms. The occultist focuses on creative use of the otherworldly powers while not having strong with harmful and offensive skills. Her abilities are no less impressive when used properly. Doctor. The doctor's skill set is mainly focused on curing different status elements and analyzing the... <gasps> I'm having the hiccups. Analyzing the possible weaknesses in enemy anatomy. The mechanic is adept at crafting her own makeshift weapons and traps, along with mechanical skills. She also understands more complicated machinery. Uh, contrary to other priest's beliefs, the Yellow Mages don't dedicate their lives to worship. Yellow Mages use otherworldly powers only to their own benefit to further their own agenda. The botanist's knowledge covers a wide variety of plants and herbs. She can create mixtures with strong healing properties, or alternatively, she can use her knowledge to create potent poisons. A dog's back there? I have no clue what he's doing. He being nosy. The thug or boxer. Info. Life is an underground boxing ring. Has taught the boxer how to deal with opponents barehanded. The boxer excels at close quarter combat. Then the journalist. Have you covered wars, coup de croix, and other disasters? The journalist has picked up various skills that helped her survive. Persuasion skills definitely not being the last on that list. Okay, I like her coat. I like her coat. I think we're gonna go with the doctor. Dan. I don't want that name. Can I? Yeah. Oh, Oliver. Oh, and guys, it is storming hella where I live, so if you hear that, I apologize. No, I don't want to skip it. Soothing sound of the rail tracks. You're not used to such peaceful and tranquil atmosphere. You can't help but let your mind wander and you reminisce what was led to you... led you to this point in life. Since you were a toddler, you had been traveling around Europa with your parents. Your parents were devout followers of the older god of fertility and creation, Sivan. Because of the nature of Sivan's cult in which in each new town you witness your parents putting on their rabbit masses heading into the meadows naked with all the other cult members. You hated this life. Your parents would be more concerned on the matters of religion than you. To make it worse, they even tried to pass on the healing gift of Sivan to you. From very early on, you learned that no gifts come without a price. With Sivan's gift of healing, you saw how the mental state of your parents deteriorated over time. They spent longer and longer times on the meadow, until one day, they never returned. You were 13 years of age, alone in the kingdom of Adon. You had to do something for a living. We're gonna become a pickpocket. You didn't have any natural talent as a pickpocket, per se, and the underworld of Adon, they're very rough on you. You weren't cut out to be a street thug, so you had to rely on the only skill you had for the money, the healing gift of Sivanian. You ended up starting a street practice of medical care where you heal people of all social classes. You soon became surprising and adapted to the healing gift of Savan. You learned the loving whispers and your affinity with Savan grew. One day, the local doctor and initial decrat, Baron, ooh, Baron Einer von Dutch, came to your dirty office out of curiosity. He wasn't familiar with Savanian's teachings and the modern medical care worked with different concepts and methods where magic certainly wasn't included in the curriculum. Nevertheless, the Baron was fascinated by your otherworldly means of healing and was impressed by the results. He made a proposition to you that you simply wouldn't turn down. He offered to take you in as his apprentice. In return, he only asked to learn more about the Savanian and other older gods. 
You agreed and moved into his huge manor. The first one to welcome you was his daughter, uh, was the daughter of the Baron, Elise Von Dutch. Something inside you changed that day, that very moment, as the two of you locked eyes. As the time went on, you became an item with Elise, finally fell into your place very naturally, and even the Baron gave you his blessing despite your background being anything but noble. But the first time in, for the first time in your life, everything felt just right. But this wouldn't last for long, as something terrible had been brewing in the Eastern Europe for a good while. The conflict between the Eastern Union and the Barrowman Empire had dragged many neighboring counties to take part in the hostilities, and the Kingdom of Rodan was no exception. The Kingdom was enlisting all able-bodied men to the front lines, and you had no choice but to pack your bags and join for the Great War. Because of your knowledge in medicine, you were given an option to join the army as a medic, or pick up a gun and join the infantry troop. Medic. You were given a scalpel, a light blue vial, and the pet pills. Not the pet pills. The war was cruel and inhumane. You had to take parts in countless things better left unspoken. The only thing that kept you going was the thought of your new family waiting for you back home. Every night you read letters from home and fall asleep to a photograph of Elise. One day, the letters ended. It was natural for letters to get lost in the chaos, but you couldn't help but help your ominous feelings. So when the King of Adon finally withdrew from the war and you rushed straight back home as fast as possible, the manor of Von Dutch was lifeless a dark and dark on the gloomy day. You stormed through the countless rooms and you couldn't find a soul in sight. That was until you found the basement door partly open. In the darkness below, you could only tell apart the silhouette of a person who had died standing in the middle of a swir swirling ritual circles. The person was Eleanor Eln Einer von Dutch himself. He had died on the spot for what seemed like self-inflicted wounds and cuts. Each corner of the basement has sacrificial gifts to an old god unknown to you. Heart sank as you recognized just who was the main sacrifice of this maddening rite. You tried to save Elise with any means necessary. You tried to exchange vital parts of yourself for the life of hers, but that didn't work. You tried unspeakable methods for days, but it was just all in vain. She was far too gone. A cult had completely swallowed the Baron while you were away, and you can only guess what he had tried to accomplish with this unholy ritual. Upon searching through the Baron's documents, you noticed a certain place mentioned frequently time and time again, a town called Preheval in the county of Bohemia. The place has something to do with the beliefs of the Baron, and maybe that you find at least some sense to this madness. It wouldn't bring back your old life, but frankly you had nothing else going for you anymore. On this small clue on what took everything away from you. Answers. That was enough of a reason to get you back on the road. How did you prepare for your trip? Medical food. Food. Managed to find two dried meats and moldy bread. Been on long and mentally taxing travel to this point. You hope to you hope that whatever you find from the small town would give you at least some closure on your sorrows. Yes, we're gonna save that. No skipping the intro. We fell asleep. I look rough, guys. Ignore that. I get sleep, I promise. <laughs> you feel like someone is watching you while you slept. They're creepy. Our suitcases have been left here without supervision. The door has the previous cabin is locked from the other side. But into the window, the cabin seems pitch black. Locked. <clears throat> Excuse me? No answer. Ooh, let's see what we have. Uh, state speed, uh, strong stimulant with performance enhancing effects. The high ray, high rise. Whoa, the high raises your awareness. The withdrawal trial tires you out. Loving whispers. Contrary to whispers, carried out by your older god civilian. He has a considerable amount of health. But curiously, the whispers' effects are solely based on civilians' whims. I have a scalpel and a silk vest. Okay. 
No answer. Five shillings. Got five dollars. There doesn't be anything interesting printed on it. So I can't find anything. Okay. Just the luggage. Duct tape. What the fuck does duct tape do? Special water resistance tape created recently in the Second Great War to steal ammunition cases in durable manner. I have no clue what the fuck we're gonna use duct tape for. Rotten meat. Ew. Butterfly. Okay. The workshop. This place is not the train anymore. You. I've been looking for you everywhere. Just where did you think you ran off to? Don't you understand the hurry we are in? I don't understand. The eyes of the janitor bulge out from the sockets and his expression intensifies. No one is sex expects you to. You're a stupid fucking human after all. Now get your ass back to the workbench. Oh. Disaster next time is punishing time. We got a tight deadline. If we don't make it, I'll have to make the next batch of cubes out of your back skin. But look at that butt. <laughs> what you googling at? There's nothing else to see. Eyes on the cubes. Work! Oh, I'll rip those eyes out of your pretty face. Okay. Use direction keys to simple cubes. Okay. Your ghost is trying to get your attention. Okay. Tables full of cubes are very sigils carved all around them. The cubes are hollow though. They seem to be missing some parts still. Ooh, where do you think you're going? Nowhere. Nowhere. Well, shit. Oh, y'all ignore that. That's a dick. <laughs> ignore that. We're gonna attack a sack. Miss me. It didn't miss me. Okay. Okay, well, we already fucked up. We're dead. <laughs> Let's see, you just run the drawer board without these chicken thighs of yours. gonna try this again <laughs> we're just gonna try this again well actually I think I fucked up hold on Doing right there. Okay. Go somewhere. 
Over there. No, I don't want to skip the intro. I'm going to try this again. I'll try it one more time. And not. Oh, it's different. Or I just didn't see that last time. Hey, we got five dollars that time. Three nine millimeter bullets. Mind if I do? Four dollars. This guy, you. I've been looking for you everywhere. Just where do you think you ran off to? You don't understand? The minions is key. That's the only way we're able to meet the quotas. Now back to your workbench. Okay. Get busy. What you googling that? There ain't nothing to see here. Eyes on the queue. Work. I ripped those eyes out of your pretty little face. Okay. Trying to get your attention. <clears throat> Come on. Okay. Where do you think you're going? Oh, why were you there? Why were you there? Please don't lose an arm. Well, shit. I don't want to be stumpy. At least I have both my arms. Oop. Oop. Oh. Okay, what kind of a machine is that? Is there like a sprint button? There's a lot of cubes. Those are arms. Your head hurts. You feel like you're losing your mind. Because I am. Oh, these are all the gods. Hey, Savon. Are you here? I would like my legs back. Pretty point. I mean, it hurts. Oh. And my legs are back. Other oh, snakes. At the moon? Ah, oh, there you are. A mysterious person greets you in the monotonous voice. Got you pulled out of that nasty place. We're going deep into you were going deep into that rabbit hole. To show his goodwill, my master mended your wounds and tattered your this once. What a joy! And now you're safe under the beautiful green hue of the moon. Welcome to the moon tower. Thank you. You're welcome. This is your wor our words cannot possibly reach my master. I speak in his behalf. And who might my master be? Well, for now, let's just say that he is a delinquent one. Wire, the trickster moon god. For me, you can call me Perkle, and I'm just a humble servant of the celestial majesty, and you are the dreamer. He is the dream. My master has invited 14 of you to join us in this jubilee of cosmic proportion. 14 candidates, but only one true victor. The festival of Termia is upon us. It's a festival to give you, the humans, a peek to gander, a chance to reach for his illustrious heights. The festival to end all festivals. 
This must be all confusing to you, and I won't burden you with more of the information of this very moment. Just head towards the tower, and that's all you need to know for now. I will gladly answer questions once you get there. But until that, let's meet again under the moonlight. I like trickster moon gods. You wake up suddenly. Was it all just a dream? Oh,